So I haven't done a vlog in two weeks for my actual special team reviewing Tokusatsu. Um, was not intentional, but I caught up in trying to finish the Tiga reviews for um, release in a couple weeks, and I kind of wanted to just get that done out of the way before I moved on to my next project, and some of these things just tend to slide when you end up watching an hour and a half of content for just to record a half hour video, and um, anyways, uh, yeah, Zoo Archer's got some new stuff, they've got the Kuma Axe, which is for Wild Zuo King, which I believe I recapped the episode that they got that. Yeah, um, so it's, that was, I watched that last week, it was kind of a meh filler, and this week is another meh filler, where, you know, it's not, it's non-caustic for Amu, as, as I've made kind of clear, Amu, I think, is the Zuojira I dislike the most, and personal opinion, I just don't like flighty people like that, but, you know, this one was kind of good in that she, um, in getting a cake from, a, uh, cake slice from a, uh, I assume it's a deli or kind of, just kind of a small confectionery place, she comes across a, uh, sibling pair, one of whom's in a wheelchair, and they wanted the same slice, it was the last one, so she decides to give it to them, and they kind of get on friendly terms, which leads into their part of the episode later, when the monster of the week, who is Dorobozu, uh, Overtime did something weird with its name this week, I'm not even certain how they got that, because you're not supposed to translate their names. Um, anyways, uh... The thief cons the older brother of the pair into assisting in its scheme because the brother needed money to pay for the sister's operation for her illness, which is... I have absolutely no idea. If they said it, I don't remember it being said in the episode. It's just like, um... You know, if you have someone in a wheelchair with a severe illness, it's kind of like, um... You need to describe what the illness is if if you don't really get to the specific condition, like uh, some type of uh, muscle damage, muscle atrophy, weak um, developmental um, immune issues, like something, something to work with, anything. If I if I legitimately list what it was, I apologize. It's just that um, you know, it, it I think they would have gotten a bit more um. If it's, it's such a key part of it, it might have been better to reference it. Eh. But yeah, the monster is weak because it's a stealth and thieving type, which, hey, it should make it so that it's clever with its ability uses. And it is! But it's also a fucking idiot. So it's like, they're being... It's like, um... How should I put this? The, um... Monster is skilled at deception and trickery, it's just that its own um, stupidity is what causes it to ultimately be defeated. Like, more like it's full of itself. It's arrogant. It doesn't think things through. So, while it could be something that is very damn effective with that specialty, it's too immature to really um, think things through. And that makes it both a good villain in that it doesn't seem like it's... Um, like, it's outsmarting the villain, the heroes in stupid ways, and it's also a bad villain in that its actual plan that it's tricking the heroes about is kind of stupid. I mean, they're in a, they're in a whole, um, the Death Galeon's whole MO is games enter and entertainment for Genesis, and really just pulling a bunch of heists is not really entertainment. It's like, um, if you're a Lupin the Third fan, it's not the heist that has made that series effectively timeless. It's the um, build up to the heist, how they get the th how they get the um, whatever they're after that makes it fun. And you know, uh, usually that third party coming in to complicate things in the form of the specials and the movies. Here we don't really have any of that. We don't have the cleverness of the heist. It's just like. Tricking someone to help it after its first heist is really unappealing, because its original plan is to steal all the ca all the cash in the world so the economy will collapse. Thing is, 
money is in cash money is just representative of a, uh, what's the phrase? The actual worth of the money is not what it says on the bill. It's representative of a state's treasury. So it's, if you wanted to get a, um, what am I, what am I just trying to describe? Um, like, yeah, it's not actually representative of monetary wealth. It's just, it's an abstract, not an abstract, it's a, physical placeholder for a representative um, system which is used for bartering goods and services. So, um, what's worth would a... Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the Power Rangers Turbo thing. You're an invading space alien. Why do you need Earth money? You don't... You can't translate anything. Hell, that was a thing in Gokaiger where Luca had to sell some of her gems because they didn't have any local earth currencies and, you know, barter really wasn't uh, a easy means for currency, except if, you know, precious jewels, gold, silver, those are kind of universal rarity items, so of course you can kind of trade that for local... I'm getting off, I'm getting off topic. Point is, its plan was its initial plan was stupid, and its second one was to steal a gemstone for Genesis, and I don't even know why I keep saying his name is Genesis. It's Genesis, um, right? Because they're being invaded by Sega. Um, but yeah, its second plan is to steal a um, priceless jewel from a museum, the museum being where the older brother works over time to be able to pay for um, his sister's operation, and, you know, he's kind of conned in... Actually, that, that's kind of the, the fun thing about this episode, in that the failed scheme of the monster, um, that he has ill-gotten gains from that, results in him being able to fund this in inner operation, which will succeed because he pays the guy off, and the guy is um, that desperate for the money for the operation that it's it it's like um it's a uh, what should I phrase this? It's a deal with the devil kind of situation. No one will get hurt. He just takes this thing, and you stall these other people, even if you. Even if they get free, it's not your fault, or, um, how should I phrase this? He did his role simply by stalling the Zooger for the cash, but of course, Monster was lying. Granted, he did a bad thing, and he eventually reneges on it thanks to Amu, uh, like, um, making him realize his act of desperation, um, isn't... I shouldn't say isn't needed, but um, would go against um, what hit, what was really needed for the both of them. And it's like a, not exactly redemption, but reconsideration of um, how he's going to go about this. Which makes it kind of work. Um, Monster's ability is specialized in self. Um, he doesn't use it well. It's lampshaded of him not using it well, and the Death Galeans being annoyed at him, not really understanding it, but with how he's selected, um, it makes a bit of sense, because um, this guy was one of two introduced subordinates of Jagged, the um, first player that was defeated in the first episode, and um, they're just... They were two that wanted to replace the missing player in the game. And, you know, it's like, the, the one's an older one, so he's more experienced and intelligent, and figured, with the actions of the younger one, just let him go first, and he'll get the, get the new player slot by default, since he'd be defeated. And I'm thinking that's the next episode in this other player um, jumping in. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I'll, we'll probably get to it next week. Um, so even though there seems to be no current progress with the Zooger in the second mission to find 
the Birdman. Um, there at least seems to be a bit of progression with the villains. And I guess and, uh, and when you're in the filler parts of the series right now, before we get to the sixth range introduction, that's all you can really expect. Ghost, however, is once more irritating. The last two episodes, which I skipped over, were part of the concluding character arc, and I did the air quotes there because his character arc has been so erratically addressed, it really doesn't like a natural development and progression. People have been saying it's better than Chase's. It's not. You know why? Because it took until he premiered his Necron to really ever establish his character before... And before that, he was just a recurring, um... Recurring what? He was just there to do things in the background and plot evilly, and we didn't even know his name for the first 16 episodes. Better than Chase? Bullshit. Um... Yeah, this is part of the problem with, um the writing with Ghost in that how uneven it is. It's like, it wants to focus on the subplots, it doesn't know how to focus on the subplots. It's like, um... Because they barely address them. And here, here the subplot is finally getting back to some new powers of Takeru's and how he can now suddenly see people's memories when he touches them, and... Here's the thing. This has been a pre-existing power. This kind of was established at the beginning of the series when he was purifying um, people of the... Um, back when they were getting the icons from, uh, from them, from the people they harmonized with. Um, when the uh, Gamma were trying to use people's souls to pull them, uh, pull them out through the resonance connection that would kill them, Takeru would make contact with them and purify them of it. And in part of that, he'd see kind of part of their motivation and purify them of that. And this is just an extension of that power. And it comes out of flat nowhere. And it's been appearing for a while now. And he, it's only now they're bothering to address why that is. And their way of addressing it is, we don't know. And Sage is not around to actually explain it, like, he hasn't been for a long time, and, like, he's barely explained anything in a long time. Um, hell, they're even finally readdressing the fact that it's been, like, four, 20 days since, um, Takeru ever even bothered to, you know, use the, I use the 15 icons. They're finally readdressing the fact that he can't use the icons to get a wish anymore due to the God Miser's awakening. It's like, it's been forever since you last addressed that. Why did it take... You, you know, you, you have a few lines about that. Long after it would have been relevant to bring it up. Ah! Um... The Gun Misers, two new ones appear this time. I think it's because the second time they fought Gun Miser Fire, they actually killed it. Considering it was supposed to be killed the first time, that's unusual. But yeah, two new Gun Misers. One has gravity powers. The other can you, the other can use lightning to return people to being children. Which um, Akari says is something that is only known to happen in jellyfish, of them reverting to a younger form. I have no idea if they can do that. Jellyfish in and of themselves are weird creatures. But I'm going to say that it, it, jellyfish are kind of a, sim a simpler kind of life form. They really don't have brains. They just... Not what we understand as brains. And they kind of just floats and sting, and it's a much simpler organism than the human body. So it's like, while it's on the same principle, to do that kind of de-age them to the state of children is kind of... Okay, it's a magic ability, and uh, the, go the gun miser seem to have more magic base aside from outside of the alchemical science stuff, so I find it 
feasible that these pseudo-god entities could possibly have that power. The problem is, what do they gain from doing this? Like, seriously, it's like, you're trying to conquer the... Okay, they could be reverting to the children so they would be helpless, defenseless, wouldn't know what's going on, so it'd be easier to defeat them. It's not like they're doing mass invasion efforts to then capitalize on that. They're not even they're not even doing that to everybody en masse. They're just being selective on how they're applying it, which And he's not they're not capitalizing on it at all. They're focusing on defeating the ghost team who are destroying the um, gates to the Gamma world uh, Alron was setting up in the early side of the show. You know, during that period where he was just skulking in the background, as I just um, stated earlier in this video. That was pretty much the only thing he did for 16 episodes. Yeah. Um, where was I? Um... But yeah, they're destroying the gates to limit the Gamma um, invasion. I presume that they're going to leave at least one existing so as to route all of the attacks and defenses and re-entry through, since um, they're eventually all defending their um, Alrons on their side due to events I'd rather not recap right now. And... It's, it's facilitating a character spotlight episode for Shibuya, who is one of the two supporting monks at the temple that you had 30 episodes to, like, slow down your plots and, you know, kind of give this kind of filler to, while well, you're addressing other stuff in the background, since as a subplot that would allow you the time to do that instead of rushing through everything, it's like, establish every one of the cast members while you have the time so you have a better grounding instead of completing two story arcs for the character for characters that were really haphazardly addressed <sighs> um but yeah Shibuya hates his mom because she beat him he beat him up uh he got beat up by her it's mainly because he's um, a more, a softer personality over hers and her husband's more hard-headedness. And, you know, if you're shouted down at people all your life and, you know, pushed around by them, of course you're going to be a bit more timid if you don't learn how to stand up for yourself. So, I'm kind of thinking this is merely um, paying into what was wrought or whatever. Granted, she owns a ramen restaurant, which is... Kind of weird for someone with that kind of overbearing persona. Weird. But yeah, I, it's trying to facilitate a, a reconciliation between the two because she's referred to a child and then Shibuya comes across her and it's really not given much attention to as it's a disconnected subplot of the episode. I shouldn't say subplot, it's the main plot of the episode, it's just that it's dressed so little, it feels like a subplot. I'm beginning to dislike Ghost. It's like taking me 30 episodes to uh, be more addressed on it, but it, it, it's really been haphazard, especially since as the episode ends, it's revealing that now we're going to give you the true truth of what happened 10 years ago, since the last man standing that was there is now out of the hospital, and why could that not have been the focus of the episode? Like, as much as I admit, feel like, you know, giving Shibuya some um, char uh, character developmental time since he's been a supporting character throughout the series is a good thing, it's like to do that. This is episode 31. This is, like, normally where the lead-in is for the uh, Final Form Power-Up, which should be starting next week, week, ne week after that. And, um... Unless they're delaying it for a few weeks, which I could see do them doing that. Um, especially since um, they still have Grateful to shell before they get to Mugen. Uh, so I'm kind of back and forthing on this. Um, good thing to give character development, supporting character, 
but when you tease us that we could have been more focused on finally getting some damn solid foundation that's not um, hand-waved explanations and a bit more establishing of how the rules of the setting work and what the Gamma are really after. Hell, the, uh, there, a subplot in the Allen episodes was actually getting back to uh, um, Bill... Bill... Um, their Bill Gates XP that's played by Thane Camus says there's one scene in the episode of how um, the last two episodes have fooled them into getting off of the Deep Connect Project's uh, subline because they think that the Bill Gates XP isn't possessed by the Ganma, which he is. And... It feels like they should have concluded the Deep Connect subplot by now, considering it's been running around in the background for 10, 15 episodes at this point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Thane Camus. I love him as an actor. I think he's... Uh, I think he would might have worked better as one of the actual antagonists as opposed to a uh, supporting player in all, in all this. Um, I like that seeing him here, I just feel like you dragging this out. You're really, um... You're not even really doing arcs to this. It's just mashed out or stretched out, and it feels too fast. It's coming too fast. It's like all over the place. But yeah, end of episode. Uh, teased to us finally getting the answers to how this whole Gamma thing actually started. Hopefully. They're probably going to back out of it. Again. Um, Garo Makai Retsuden. Continuing to love the series, but this is one of the weaker episodes. Um, mainly because you don't know the context to it. Um, it's focused this time around Biku, a uh, Makai priest that's pretty much internal affairs for their... Um, organization, meaning she hunts rogue Makai knights and Makai priests, which means that anyone who's part of this society is wary of her kind, since it means that if she's going after them, she's going to kill them. And even if they were doing bad things, um, well, yeah, there will be grudges left. And this time, it's shown that there is a shadowy organization out there that wants to get rid of um, these type of internal affairs, um, assassins. So they trained in secret a bunch of Makai Priest assassins, one named Erica, which first tricks her into believing that she's on the run from someone, and then, um, trying to kill her when her guard is down. Problem is, Biku's guard is never down. She's kind of a badass. Um, of course, the... Uh, this is apparently not the first of these assailants. There's, this is apparently number 18. Whether they've gone in order is not said. But she ultimately fails her mission, and because she's failed her mission, they immediately send other assassins not to take care of Biku, but to take care of Erika. And it's like, they're right there. Why don't you assist her in taking care of Biku, if she's really that much stronger than your specialized assassin, so, you know, she succeeds in her mission, which you sent her on, well, woefully unprepared for it. And hell, if she's supposed to be strong enough to kill Biku, the one who regularly kills Makai knights and priests, um, and she's not strong enough to do that, what makes you think you're strong enough to kill the assassin you specially trained to kill the, the Makai Knight assassin? It just seems like it's, um... The organization is kind of... Behind this is kind of stupid. I don't, we don't even know what the organization doing this is. Because I feel like this is a tease to Biku's um, solo sequel movie, which is has been teased for a while for um, in the whole Garo thing. It's uh, one of the direct sequel movies to Makai no Hana. I, there's long been a rumor of one for Raiga as well, but for all I know, that might be rolled into uh, 
the events of uh, Makai Retsuden, since Daigo and... Uh, not Daigo. Ryuga and Rian had a Spotlight episode a couple weeks ago. The one I didn't get to cover because I was busy with the Tika stuff. So if it is, hopefully that whole thing will be fleshed out more, and this is just a tease to get us going... to get us, um informed about what's going on, or at least tease us about what's behind all this. But as an episode in and of itself, it's unsatisfying, as it doesn't really lay the um, contextual framework like the others have for their specific situations. Um, even the one with um, the Makai Knight hunting uh, from Makai Senki, I'm forgetting the guy's specific name, um, please don't say it in the comments. Um, I haven't seen Mikai Senki yet, so it's more... I feel it's more forgivable, but I can't, don't remember his name yet. But the guy who was going to the horror bars to hunt down the horrors, and it's like, it, that was more cohesive, as it was just a tale of how the guy was going about these um, exchanges at, in the way... Uh, in the means of a horror story... Where the horror, where the uh, monsters, like, or should rephrase, it's a horror story from the monster's perspective, with the good guy being the monster, being in their perspective the monster, in how he hunts them down. Yes, because you know that that's like a one and done um, cohesion to it. Whereas this shadowy organization thing. It's introduced out of nowhere, and it's concluded out of nowhere. If it's a leading to something else, we can count it as a prologue. But out of context to that, it's it's pretty weak. Um, other news. Um, on YouTube, I'm finally getting back to posting more episodes. I took yesterday to render out a bunch of them. I'm doing watches this week for other stuff so I can have some rendering in the background. I did buy the Kaka Ranger set from Shout Factory. It arrived yesterday. It matches perfectly with the other sets. You'll be seeing it in the upcoming videos in July on my backdrop right next to the chaser box thing that you'll be seeing in a couple weeks with the Tika videos. It'll, it'll all make sense in context. Um, that is not exactly on the plate for this year. I'm finally doing the Zoo Ranger thing in a few weeks. Not a few weeks, um, well, I'll be watching it in a few weeks. The videos will probably not be up for a couple months yet, depending on how I time it with, um, Mass Effect 3 and whether I can actually get that done or get the things that I have on order special for its events or whether I need to pull, to delay that or not. It's a whole mess. Um, other news. I have heard about the Power Rangers reunion movie, The Order. Um, if you've not seen it, check um, Johnny Onbosch's Twitter or Facebook page. He's apparently the executive producer for the film, and he has been advertising it. If you follow any of the general Power Rangers actors, you might see this um, three slashes above a triangle with a circle and an emblem on it. That's indicative of um, the Power Rangers actors that have signed on for this reunion movie. It in no re way relates to Power Rangers, but it's kind of supposed to be thematically similar to something called the Hexagon that was the brainchild of um, Emmett Baumick for uh, Ninja Storm. It feels very much like that in context, as it's supposed to be two teams of... Um, world Guardians have begun to butt heads, so it's kind of a Captain America Civil War situation as well, I guess it would be a better way to set that up or describe it. Pretty much, just look it up for yourselves. Um, it sounds like an interesting concept. I'm on board for seeing it happen. Hell, I liked Blood Punch, the RPM actor reunion movie with Andy Gazalian um, executive producing it. That's another one you guys should look up. I think there's an, another one with the SPD crew that they did something. I, I'm not exactly certain on that. I don't remember that um, if they actually did something or if that was just talks about it. But I, 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 I'm, I'm curious on how on where this is, all this is going. Um, 
trying to think if there was any other relevant news to discuss while I'm here. I'm not, I'm blanking on anything else. So, I'll just sign off and see you all, see you all next week.